Hi, my name is Andrea Dahl, Central Division staff member and examiner. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced us to take a hard look at how we administer all our programs, but it has also created opportunities to develop new ways of conducting courses and administering exams. In response to these challenges, Central Division has created the Virtual Level 2 exam. It's formatted to deliver maximum flexibility to fit into your schedule and it's a reproducible and consistent process with the added benefit of fewer associated expenses such as travel, lodging, and meals. The virtual exam teaching module is comprised of two parts, a video of your teaching created and submitted by you, and a Zoom session with examiners. The great thing about this process is that you choose when to take your exam, you choose when to shoot your video, and you choose among dozens of convenient dates to interact with your evaluators via Zoom to cap off the process. <laughs> Today I'm going to show you how to prepare, shoot, and submit a teaching video for the exam assessment with some suggestions that will help ensure your teaching assignment video is the best it can be meeting and hopefully exceeding the national standards for level 2 certification. First, prepare by teaching. Teach at least two or three lessons in the intermediate zone with an observer in order to feel comfortable with eyes on you. These can be real lessons with a colleague watching you, or you can practice teaching a fellow instructor who is either level 1 like yourself or just registered. Your lessons should fall into one of three categories. Introduce and teach the student something new. Refine and adjust a movement pattern that will improve your student's performance. Or adapt something they already know to a new skiing environment or performance challenge. Regardless of who you choose to teach, make sure your student wants a lesson. If you choose a fellow instructor as more of a prop, you may hurt your chances of a fair evaluation if your colleague is not legitimately seeking help. If you are really meeting a need, your teaching will reflect who you really are as a person and your best qualities as an instructor will show through. After each of your lessons and before you videotape, do some reflection, ideally with the help of the person observing you. Consult the national standards for level 2, but don't get too dragged into the minutia. When you reflect, keep the learning connection at the top of your mind. Reflect on how you interacted with your student, how you developed trust and rapport, how you partnered and communicated to create an achievable goal together. Were you able to build confidence and enthusiasm? Reflect on how you and your student performed on skis. Did you demonstrate accurately? Were you able to connect the student's body movements to how the skis performed? And could you tell when those movements were effective? And, certainly, reflect on your teaching process. Did you engage the student with a static exercise, making sure the connection to the learning goal was understood? Did you use a simple exercise that incorporated the new movement into parts of a turn? Did you blend the learning into whole turns while keeping the focus and understanding? And did you practice, experiment, and adjust your student's performance while getting a lot of mileage? While no lesson is ever perfect, and certainly no lesson under scrutiny is likely to meet or exceed every single assessment criteria in an exam, as you'll see later, this process of self-reflection will be key to your success when you get to the Zoom exam assessment stage. So now you're ready to videotape a lesson. This may seem daunting, but in reality, the preparation phase is the harder part and the video should be easier with a few guidelines now that you're used to having your lessons observed. Select someone who is comfortable using a video camera. This person does not have to be a great skier, just able to follow you on beginner and intermediate terrain. The videographer needs to make sure both you and your students are in frame at all times. Don't worry too much about sound quality, because you'll have the opportunity to discuss what you were saying during the session with the examiners. You needn't adjust your routine for the video camera. Shoot at an angle from below into the side with people three quarters of the frame height for static sequences. 
and one half of frame height for skiing sequences. Shoot continuously for the length of a normal lesson, however long that takes. Have the shooter break only for lift rides or other times when all you are doing is changing locations. Remember though to include footage of you making the suggestion to change locations, as it should be done for a reason. Overall, you may end up with an hour of video, so make sure the videographer has the batteries and memory card necessary. And very importantly, do not edit your video in any way. Here are some other tips. Be yourself, have fun, and help your students reflect on their experience. After all, you've had practice doing that too. And don't worry if you make a mistake or change your mind about anything. As a matter of fact, you'll get the opportunity, when formatting your video for presentation, to use that moment to show your assessors the breadth and depth of your knowledge. Once you've shot your video, there will be a lot of video for you to review, but we expect that the segments showing you meeting or exceeding the national standards will add up to no more than 20 minutes, and probably less. For example, you may have a student practice a movement for an entire run that takes four to five minutes, but the moments just before and just after you give your feedback are key and may only take a minute. We've made the selection process easy. By preparing a Google Slides format that has level two teaching assessment criteria built right in. Here, for example, is one of the slides with the assessment criteria for teaching effectiveness. This instructor has selected a video segment from midway through the lesson where he had moved to steeper terrain to meet the student's desire to ski safely and fluidly on more challenging terrain. In his judgment, he has met three of the five criteria. In reviewing his tape, he realizes there was a point a few minutes earlier when he met the other two criteria. He has chosen to isolate that segment and highlight it with another Google slide. Or he could have incorporated the longer segment into one Google slide that, when viewed in its entirety, shows how he met all five criteria. This is just an example of how the Google Slides template supplied by the office will guide you through the entire process. It's a self-assessment tool that has been designed to set you up for success when you finally meet your examiners in the Zoom session. When the day comes for you to have your assessment session, the Google Slides document you submitted will be the main reference for the time you spend with the examiners. There will be ample time to discuss any shortcomings the examiners might find and for you to address those in the question and answer session. If you come prepared, the system is designed for you to succeed. Now, if the sound quality of your video was exceptionally poor, here's your opportunity to explain what your approach was, what the verbal exchanges between you and your student were. Remember, actions do speak louder than words, so if in doubt, show the student what you want and demonstrate how to move. So there you have it the new Central Division Level 2 Virtual Exam Teaching Module. Be sure to look at the Google Slides video, which will explain in depth how to use the application. And to also review the written documents that go into more detail about this program. Visit PSIAC.org for more information on how to take part in this exciting new exam format for Level 2 certification.